Well, welcome to another video and welcome to Spain, specifically a racetrack called Harama. I think that's how you say it, just outside of Madrid. And if I turn the camera this way, you may be able to see behind me right there. There are a few Toyotas and if you've got a keen eye, you'll know that those are GT. 86s. However, we're not here for the Toyota GT86 today. We are here for the return of a legend. It's going to be legendary. Now, before any of that, let's have a little history lesson. A little history lesson about Toyota and more specifically sports cars made by Toyota. Toyota is most well known for making pretty usable, accessible, cheap cars and they've become a huge player in the game, making their own city where they develop their cars. Toyota sports cars though, they started way back, 1965, when the 2000 GT came out. Now the 2000 GT must be one of the most iconic and beautiful, some would say, Japanese sports cars ever made. And they only ever made 351. And now there are only 13 left in Europe. They have 150 horsepower and the most recent one was sold at auction for 1.2 million dollars. And that's why the whole Toyota sports car story started. It was then continued in the late 70s when the Celica Supra was launched in 1978. Now this Supra name is going to become very relevant and it's the start of a legend. It was first linked to the Celica. So Celica Supra was a car launched featuring an inline six. However, the inline six was only available in America and in Japan, so not in Europe. And it was developed as more of a Grand Tourer car. Now after the Celica Supra, so the first Supra, the A40, we then skipped to 1981 where the Celica Supra again it's a Supra featuring the Celica name, this time called the A60 was launched. We don't talk about the A50 much because it was just a facelift. Now the A60 featured an inline six, 145 horsepower from its 2.8 liter engine and was much more sporty, much more of a sports car than a Grand Tourer. For example, it was one of the first sports cars launched with a limited slip diff, which makes for a lot of fun. Following that, the A70, which was the first ever Supra to be launched as a purely Supra car without the Celica name, was launched in 1985. Now this had 270 horsepower and was one of the best selling Supras, selling over 200,000 models. That's a lot more than the 40,000 A80s which was sold. Now that car is an icon. Now in the early 1990s, Honda had launched the NSX and that meant that Toyota needed to come out with a really exciting sports car. So they launched the A80, which we all know for being very famous from movies such as Fast and Furious, of course. Now it was an instant hit with its unique design and in its most powerful version with the turbo, it could go up to 326 horsepower. But that was only a starting point because after the Fast and Furious franchise, people got into tuning these cars and there are some reported to have up to 2,041 horsepower, which is pretty mad. The production of this car ran all the way through to 2002 when it had to be stopped due to regulations. Now that brings us all the way to today. Specifically this, the brand new A90 Super. Now as the name suggests, this is leading on after the A80. And right now it isn't camouflaged because they don't want us to see too many details because this is a pre-production car. But it's going to be released very, very soon to have deliveries next year. Now this car, we don't have exact figures for it yet, but they're saying 300 horsepower and up. So we don't have an exact number, but we know it'll be more than 300 horsepower and same thing goes for the newton meters of torque now we also don't have any performance figures other than knowing there's going to be under a five second naught to 60. we do however know that it has the legendary inline six with a turbocharger now this is toyota continuing in the sports car market and trying to pierce a new hole in a market which we know very well now the way they want to do that 
is by making this car handle beautifully. So they've gone for an extremely short wheelbase, shorter in fact than the Toyota GT86, but a very wide track. Now on top of that, they've made it super rigid. It's not using any carbon fiber, but there is plenty of aluminum. Now this car happens to be more rigid than the Lexus LFA and you guys know that is a legendary much more expensive car. I personally think it's obviously maybe hard for you guys to see on camera with the camera but in real life you can kind of get an idea of the proportions. I think it looks fantastic especially from the back here it's got some cool gadgets like a Formula One styled little light there comes on when you're reversing and it's very very cool it reminds me of the Ferraris as well. It's got these nice rims now of course most of what we see here we're not entirely sure if it's going to stay on the production car or not but these rims are lovely now they are hiding some Brembo calipers underneath there so we're talking serious in terms of the brakes it's got all over the body though it's got these air intakes which are filled in they're fake air intakes which will only be useful on the race car so I believe they're gonna make a GT4 class race car I personally am not a huge fan of fake air vents and there's plenty of them around this car now we're also not gonna lie to you this is also probably quite similar to what's gonna be the new BMW Z4 and you can kind of feel that inside the inside is completely covered up so you can't see it but I mean anything from like the key currently we don't know if that's going to stay through or the interior entirely was going to stay through but you can feel like there is a lot of bmw-ness in there now that may be a great thing for some of you but if you were expecting this to be a completely separate project it's not quite that at least from what we can see now now that being said also there's a very bmw noise i think we should show you some of that right now <laughs> sounded pretty good there right well on the move actually not to disappoint you it's not quite as impressive you don't get that many crackles and the sound is kind of uh, feels a bit muted but I am told that that's for the Euro cars and potentially in the American market they're going to unlock that and it's due to regulations and anyways it is a Supra so a lot of people are probably going to modify them and put exhaust on them regardless now you let me know in the comments down below what you think on the looks of this car I personally think it is very very cool it, you can tell it's very small um, but it's got a nice start seeing as it's so low and short and quite wide. The interior is all covered up so I can't show you too much of that um, but as I said there are many many BMW parts but there is a very cool semi-digital dashboard now semi-digital because uh, it's not like one of those massive screens like you have in Audis and stuff. It is pretty cool uh, you know I would have liked to have a huge screen and kind of take all that technology aside but it does feel like they've definitely developed this to be used on the road rather than just on the track so it's 100% when you get inside it feels like a comfortable car that you could use daily it's not a stripped out race car maybe there'll be versions coming of that later but they've uh, they've definitely not gone for that on this one it's a very exciting car and the development they've put into this and probably the money they've invested in this car is huge and with it being such a legendary name they need to get it right so i think it's about time we hop into the car give it a go and see what this new supra the a90 is actually like to drive now first of all we are around i think you say Chahama. I, I don't really know i've, I've probably completely messed Harama. that up Harama. Harama. okay Harama racetrack which is extremely technical and has just been resurfaced and we're blasting around here currently in the supra now as i mentioned before to you in the video we don't know exactly how much power it has 300 horsepower over 300 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque now how does it feel that's the most important thing it feels really good actually to be honest in a nutshell now there are obviously a few things which you can definitely feel as soon as you hop in so you can feel that the difference between normal and sport because we've gone around in both is actually pretty huge the adaptive suspension you can definitely feel the uh the car stiffening stiffening up trying to concentrate as we're going around this track which i have literally just discovered but you can feel the car stiffen up you can feel the sound of the you can hear the sound of the engine a bit more um it's still not crazy ideally i would want it to be a little bit louder uh, when it was coming past the straight you couldn't hear it that much the steering is really nice now obviously as you can tell we've got cloth all over the seat so that you can't see the interior this is still not a production car um, so we can't show the dashboard we can't show the interior of the car but it feels quite nice in here and it feels like this car will be usable when eventually it hits the roads the gearbox so eight speed automatic I'm on the panels right now feels really rather good um, sometimes it doesn't change down quite when you want it to but when it actually does let you do your shifts, it is very, 
very quick and there aren't really any pops or bangs or anything exciting happening on the gear shift but they do what you need them to do which is the most important it is sometimes annoying when you're coming into the corners and you want to downshift and it won't quite let you but one thing which is cool is it won't upshift for you when you hit the red line the weight distribution as they told us in a press conference earlier it's 50-50 and you can really feel that around the corner. So it's so well balanced and really quite planted through the quick stuff. Right now we're going over a blind left-hand corner. You can really feel that the car you know, is going where you want it to go. So you can put as much steering lock in as you want and the car's kind of just like there waiting like, yeah, I can do more. So the car is extremely balanced and extremely grippy, which is really, really nice. And bearing in mind also we've got the air conditioning on this isn't a stripped out race car this is a road going version of the Supra the brakes feel quite nice um, nothing particularly special they brake quite hard but not shockingly so um, and quite nice feel through them the acceleration is quick not brutal won't you know sort of kick your head back but for this car and where I imagine we don't know a price yet but I imagine the price point it'll be in this is really, really competitive, and there's definitely enough power for you to have a lot of fun. It feels like a driver's car. Now you can feel it is very modern, um, so you know it's not as light as maybe some people are hoping it would be. It doesn't feel kind of like if you're driving one, you know, a car that's under a thousand kilos. Um, but then again, it will mean that it's very usable. So there is plenty of sort of toys to play with in here. Time to see how the Supra drifts. I'm with Frederick right here, What's who's up? gonna show us how it's done. This is gonna be quite the ride, guys. Prepare yourselves. I think we're both kids in a candy store right now. Oh right? yeah. New Supra, yeah. just now coming out. Yeah. I've been waiting for this car for 10 years. Yeah. And here we are, yeah. beating- uh, Some of the first the people in the world. Exactly. This is so sick. Thank you, dude. What? You'll get to try. And I'm looking forward to that. Here's that right now. Okay, so this is a GT86. Feels so light, this car. And it is. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Business. Dude! 
lucky, dude. You're the man. That You're gonna go fun. through all the tires today. <laughs> well, that's that, guys. From drifting a GT86 to trying out the new Supra. That was such a fun day, obviously. Thank you to Toyota for the invite. I'm very excited for the Supra. As I said, all the little pieces that I mentioned earlier, please do remember that this is a pre-production car and there are certain things they're gonna try and change. The exhaust, apparently, they're gonna try and work on that and the interior a tiny bit, but I really, really did enjoy the car and this track is absolutely fantastic. And most of all, thank you for watching. If you want more content like this and you wanna see more reviews, more just daily videos and vlogs of someone who loves cars just like you do, please hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys and I'll see you very soon. Cheers, bye bye. Hey. Hey, Let's go. Once again.